Blueprints are great for making logic, but making them communicate properly can be tricky. That's where event dispatchers come in. In this video, we'll break down event dispatchers, how they work, when to use them, and how to create your own. Event dispatchers act as broadcasters, sending signals that other blueprints can listen and respond to. Think of them like radio stations. The dispatcher sends out a signal and any blueprint that's tuned in will react. All actors come with pre-built event dispatchers. To see what these are, you can drag off event begin play and type in a sign. Any of these ones that begin with a sign are pre-built event dispatchers that you can bind to. For this example, we'll use the on destroyed event. As you can see, it created a custom event. The custom event has an execution pin and an input of the destroyed actor. This can be used to reference what actor was destroyed. For this example, we will spawn an explosion particle effect when the actor is destroyed. We can see after two seconds, the actor was destroyed. Next, if we unplug the binding, we can see that the particle effect never plays. And if we don't connect the red delegate pin to the custom event, we will get an error telling us the event dispatcher pin is not connected. Another example of pre-built event dispatchers can be found in the level sequence. Drag a level sequence into your level and create a reference to it in the level blueprint. From here, create a reference to the sequence player and type in a sign. Here you can see all the different types of event dispatchers that are in the sequence player. For this example, we will use the unfinished event dispatcher to print the string called do something. This can be useful during gameplay if you want to do something after a level sequence finishes playing. You can also unbind from events during gameplay. In this example, we will unbind from the unfinished event and you will see that print do something does not appear in the top left corner. I also am using this node called create event which instead of dragging the red wire across the event graph, it will just create a reference to the custom event and call it from there. I have set up this collection system to show you how you can create your own custom event dispatchers. The system uses a base pickup class, which has a static mesh component and a sphere collision component. It also has an event dispatcher with an input of type BP pickup base. This acts as a framework for the other collectibles in the system. A child class called BP pickup gem is created from BP pickup base. The static mesh is set to a jam and the sphere collision is set to the right radius. The on begin overlap event is implemented from the sphere collision. It checks if the player is overlapping and if the player is overlapping, the on collected event dispatcher is called passing a self reference and the actor is destroyed. In the class defaults of pickup jam, the actor tag is set to jam pickup. This is used to filter different pickup types. A manager class is created to manage the pickups within the level. The first function in the manager gets all actors of type BP pickup base with a tag. It then promotes this array to a variable. The pickup actor tag is promoted to a variable and is set to instance editable to make it easier to add more pickup types later on. The pickup actors array is then looped through assigning the on collected event dispatcher to a new event in the pickup manager called on collected. This means that any time a pickup calls its on collected event dispatcher, 
the event will also fire in the pickup manager. When on collected is called, a BP pickup base reference is passed. This reference can be used to remove it from the pickup actors array. We can then check if the actors array is empty. If it isn't empty, it will print the remaining number of actors to collect. If it is empty, it will print all actors collected and will call a new event dispatcher called on all collected. This was created in the BP pickup manager. A pickup manager is then placed into the level and the tag is set to gem pickup. This is important as this is the tag used to search for pickups within the level. If the tag set here does not match the tag on the pickup, then the manager will not be able to find any pickups within the level. We will now bind to the on all collected event by creating a reference to the pickup manager and assigning it a custom event within the level blueprint. The custom event is then linked to an open door custom event, which is inside a door. This is the setup for the door. It has two custom events, open and closed door, connected to a timeline with a float curve going from zero to one, setting the location of the doors. This is then placed in the level and the open door event is called from the level blueprint. Let's see if it works. You can see the numbers being printed in the top left and when all the collectibles of type gem have been collected, the door opens. We can easily add more gems to this system. Here I duplicate two gems and when I collect all five, the door opens. Let's create another pickup type. Create another blueprint class of type BP base pickup. Copy and paste the logic from the gem pickup and set the static mesh to a coin and set the actor tag to coin pickup. Place the coins in the level and place another manager in the level and set the pickup tag variable to coin pickup. This is important as it needs to match the pickup type you're trying to manage. Open the level blueprint and create another reference to the pickup manager and assign on all collected a new custom event. Create another reference to the door and call open door. I'll unplug this closed door event for now. When we play and collect the gems, the first door opens. Then when I collect the coins, the next door opens. This system decouples your blueprints, making them more modular, reusable, and easier to manage, reducing dependencies and improving scalability. To show how scalable the system is, we will now close the first door with the second manager. By creating a reference to the first door, and call the on closed event when all the coins have been picked up on the first door. Hopefully you have found this video useful and have learnt what event dispatchers are, how to use existing event dispatchers, how to create your own event dispatchers and why they are useful. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this overview on how to use event dispatchers in Unreal Engine. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, drop a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. The project files are available for free in the description below. Thanks for watching.